Okay, I think we'll uh, we'll go ahead and get rolling. So welcome to today's or this month's 15 minute feature Friday. Today we're going to be talking about hardware acceleration and how it applies within the milestone environment. We're going to be going over the uh, requirements, uh, where we have hardware acceleration, what applications have it, where the benefits are, and at the end we can take some questions. So I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, get right into it here. First of all, uh, just let me confirm, can uh, somebody type into the question box? Just make sure my screen share is coming through okay. You guys can hear me all right. Everything's good. Let's see here. Our chat tool. Yep. Okay, perfect. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and kick it off. So my name is Jason Wallace. I'm a solutions engineer with Milestone. I work with the pre-sales department. I've uh, been with Milestone, geez, I don't even know, uh, probably uh, three and a half, four years now. So I'm um, going to kick, go, go ahead and uh, and kick it off. So, so overall, what are the requirements for hardware acceleration? So I want to emphasize first and foremost that hardware acceleration is an optional feature in Milestone. It is not a requirement. So we have people that uh, work in virtualized environments and uh, use our software in VMware environments, that kind of thing, all day, every day. Um, most of the time, those guys don't get to take advantage of hardware acceleration. There, there are some people that have figured out some tricks to map GPUs to virtual machines, but generally speaking, uh, those guys don't get to use hardware acceleration, so it is optional. You don't have to use it. But we do strongly suggest it for H.265 in particular because it's such an intensive codec to decrypt and to uh, deal with. Um, if you don't have hardware acceleration, it greatly reduces the number of cameras that you can handle on a single system. That's both server-side and workstation. So again, not a requirement, but it really is nice when you have it, and you can almost consider it a requirement for H.265 for performance sake. As far as operating system, Windows 8.1 and Windows 10, sorry, Windows 7 users don't get to use it. Um, we, our servers don't run on Windows 7 any longer, but you can still get away with running um, your smart client software in Windows 7. So it, there's two flavors of hardware acceleration. We've got Intel CPUs that have what they call quick sync technology. So these are typically gonna be your Intel CPUs that have video support. And we also have NVIDIA graphics card hardware acceleration, and it's only NVIDIA, not uh, AMD. Uh, so it's just uh, integrated in with NVIDIA. And both NVIDIA and a, uh, Intel can be used at the same time, and it will automatically load balance between the two technologies. You can even have more than one NVIDIA card combined with Intel, and it will seamlessly load balance between all three that are available on a system. It's, it's pretty slick how they have it implemented. So the modern Intel CPUs that get to take advantage of this, again, are the ones that have what they call quick sync. Um, typically, these are going to be your i3, i5, i7, you know, type CPUs. There are a few exceptions with the Xeons. Uh, there are a couple of Xeons that do have this, this technology built into them, but kind of generally considered the lower-end Xeons. Uh, the higher-end server class Xeon CPUs generally will not have this technology built into it, so you're kind of limited to the NVIDIA technology. Uh, oh, somebody's asking about Windows Server OS. Yes, we do support it on Windows Server OS, too. Uh, that would be uh, 2012 and later. Uh, we prefer, I think it's a 2012, 2012 service back too, but I, I believe it works on 2012 basic as well. So, um, and above. So with uh, with a few exceptions, the Xeons, yeah, they don't have the GPU support. And with the um, with regard to Intel specifically, their hardware acceleration, it's best to have the RAM and match pair. So you get to take advantage of the dual channel um, video or dual channel memory technology in there. It's, it gives you, a, it's not required, but it gives you a really significant performance boost to be able to do that. Then for the uh, NVIDIA hardware requirements, we have a wide range of support. Um, even if you have a slightly older card, you'll, you'll still generally see benefit from it if you put it in there, because it'll use it use the card up to, the, to its capacity. And then once the, that card is used up, what it can get from it, then it'll revert back to the traditional non-accelerated way for those additional video channels it's having to deal with. So in other words, you can get partial help from a card. Um, it doesn't have to be, your video card doesn't have to be sufficient to power or support all of your video channels. It'll, the system's smart enough to use what it can from the card and then go back to CPU rendering for the for the remaining channels that you're having to deal with. So typically your newer cards, either going to be their Turing or your Pascal are going to give you your best results. But like I said, the older generation cards will work as well. So consumer class examples, newer RTX 20, 2060s or, or the next, previous generation GTX 1060, 1070, 1080, those would be just fine. Uh, server class examples might be your Quattro P1000, P2000, P4000, those type of cards. Uh, they're going to give you a, a significant boost as well. 
And it's really, it's not about the CUDA cores. So you're thinking, you know, what if I put a Tesla card in there and put a really high-end, super powerful NVIDIA graphics card? You're going to be throwing your money away with regard to hardware acceleration for what we're doing with HD64. Because we're not using the CUDA cores. It's not that part of the card that we're taking advantage of. There's really no advantage for these ultra high-end cards. We're taking advantage of a different chipset that's on those cards that deal with the HD64, HD65 decoding and encoding. And it's an independent function from the from the GPU core. So you don't need to go crazy on your uh, on your graphics card. It's really more about the latest generation of the card and making sure you have uh, sufficient video RAM to handle the number of monitors you're going to have up on the screen. That's what's really more important. So what software can leverage the hardware acceleration technology? So all of the smart clients can, both Intel and NVIDIA, and it get it a load balance. If you have two NVIDIA cards and an Intel, it'll use all three of those and automatically balance the load on the screen. I'll show you an example of that a little bit later, but you'll, you'll actually see some video channels on the NVIDIA card one, some on NVIDIA card two, some on the Intel, and it actually mixes them up on a single screen and tries its best to balance out the load between all those different technologies you may have in the system. For mobile server, also same thing, takes advantage of both Intel and NVIDIA. And on the recording server, all tiers get Intel, but NVIDIA acceleration is only available on our expert and corporate tiers of the software. So what does it look like when you're actually in the milestone software? So from a recording server standpoint, this is a screenshot of our management client. So if you actually click on the camera node and you drill down to a camera, then you go to the motion tab where you're setting up your motion detection, you'll see at the top there, there's an option that says hardware acceleration, automatic or off. Its default is automatic, which means it's gonna use whatever's available there for it to take advantage of. You do have the option to turn it off. I'm not sure why you'd ever want to, but the option's there to turn it off if should you, should you need to or should you want to. Within the mobile server, there's no interface to turn it on or off. It's just on by default. There's nothing to change. I believe you can go into a config file and um, you know manually disable it by modifying a config file if you really wanted to for some reason. But generally, there's there's no instances I can think of off the top of my head where anybody would want to because it's it's only good. It's going to help you work faster, work more efficiently, and lower your CPU levels. So it's just on in mobile server. And in the smart client software you have an interesting feature in there where you, it's gonna be on by default. That's where the arrow is pointing at the top of the screen there. That's gonna uh, be where it says auto and it has hardware acceleration listed there. And so it's gonna be on or auto by default, but you can turn it off if you want to. And there's another feature in Milestone Smart Client called Video Diagnostic Overlay. That's um, gonna be able, you're gonna do this really neat feature where it shows you an overlay on each and every one of your camera channels and it's independent for each camera channel. And it shows you the performance of that camera, what's going on in terms of codec and resolution and, and what hardware acceleration you're using. If you are using hardware acceleration, I'll show you a screenshot of that. But if you wanna see what that looks like, go into your settings in Smart Client, go to Advanced and uh, set the video diagnostic level. Let's go ahead and take it up to level three and then close it out. And you'll see what appears on the screen is this next screenshot here that looks like this. And so in the top corner of every one of your video channels, you'll have a little um, little block of text like this. It's kind of trans translucent that you can see through. So it, it, you'll see on here on the screenshot, you're seeing frames per second, your video codec, your resolution, but you're also seeing where the arrow's pointing there, what, what hardware acceleration technology is being leveraged to show that channel of video. So this was an example from my home system where I had um, some roughly, I think, 16 cameras up on the screen. Some of them were using the Intel CPU and some of them were using the NVIDIA CPU you see on the right where that first arrow is. And if you look further down, it'll even tell you what the GPU is that it's leveraging for that channel. So in that instance, on the right-hand side, it was using my Quattro P1000 and that was a laptop. So you have kind of this weird code thing there for the GPU PCI. But if it was a traditional desktop or, or server system where you had normal PCI slots, it would It'll show you what PCI slot you're using for the NVIDIA card. It'll actually say, you know, slot one, two, three. So not only is it telling you what technology you're using for that video channel, but it's also telling you what slot it's being leveraged. So it's, it's really, really informative in the information you get from this. So moving forward here, um, just to give you an example of the CPU usage you can get out of this. Um, on, this was, again, an example on my home system. So I just brought up the, the resource monitor. And you can see on the top where the arrows are pointing the difference between the CPU usage when I was leveraging hardware acceleration for that full screen layout versus when I wasn't. And uh, so it was roughly 26% CPU usage with hardware acceleration. It really wasn't engaging the CPU at all. And with it off, it brought it up to 62. And this was a significant i7 I've got in this laptop. Um, so it's, it makes a really, really impactful difference between the, when you have the technology enabled, it's, it's really, it's really profound. It's, it's great thing to take advantage of, especially on a client workstation where you're going to be dealing with a lot of channels of video and displaying it up on a screen. It's something you really want to consider taking advantage of. So 
that brought me close to uh, the end of this. So I wanted to do play a little video for you guys. This was one that was released um, a little while back that we did on hardware acceleration, kind of covers it. It's about two and a half minutes. And then at the end of that video, we'll, uh, we'll take some questions in the in the chat box if, um, if anybody has any questions for the stuff that, um, that I've missed or, or didn't cover for you. So if I do this right, it should play the video and then I'll be back shortly afterward. This will change the industry. We're setting a new standard for performance and processing power. Hardware acceleration is when we use hardware components to more effectively decode the video on the client side and on the server side. Video installations and users need solutions that maximize the productivity and make the most of the available resources. Milestone is the only VMS that allows decoding on the client side and on the server side using NVIDIA graphics cards and really shifting all of the processing from CPU to GPU. The benefits are making more of the available hardware, reducing cost, and really freeing up resources for better use. This allows for the servers to have more cameras. It also allows for the screens to show more streams, and overall gives a much more efficient solution while lowering the cost. In this performance test, we added NVIDIA cards one after the other while monitoring the decrease in the CPU load, the usage levels of the GPUs, and how many more streams the recording server can handle without dropping any frames. This means that we are increasing quantity without compromising quality. Using a total of four NVIDIA graphics cards, we managed to increase the total number of cameras connected to the recording server by 80%, while lowering the CPU load by more than 60% on average, and maintaining a steady frame rate of 30 frames per second. When we use only the CPU or the built-in Intel GPU, this machine in this specific setup could handle up to 450 connected cameras before maxing out the CPU, with hardware acceleration and four NVIDIA cards added, we managed to almost double that amount, with more than 800 cameras connected to the same recording server without losing any frames at all. By improving the performance of the systems, we allow for solutions way beyond security, into traffic monitoring, retail store monitoring, really going way beyond what conventional systems would do, even into augmented reality. Video is the raw material that feeds the analytics of tomorrow. A market of analytics that is set to grow more than 20% in the coming three years. So hardware acceleration is at the heart of this, with higher processing power and lower cost. Okay, I think I'm back. So hope that was uh, helpful for everybody. And uh, now this is the part where we just go on to um, some questions. I pasted these links for the, uh, there's a, a video we have called uh, Eric Featureman. He's uh, kind of an animated character that's good for um, kind of a high level under understanding of uh, hardware acceleration. Pasted that link into the chat window first. And then the video that I just played, I also pasted that into the chat uh, window second. So if you guys want to reference that, you can also find them on our content portal on the Milestone website. And uh, that's it. So um, I can take some questions if anybody has any questions for that. I do see one in here where they were at, somebody was asking about if it would be possible to have a client calculator on the mouse and website for creating client configurations. Um, that's something that is on our radar. We've been thinking about trying to figure out a way to do that. It's just really tricky because there's so many variables that go into it, whether, you know, whether it's a 4K monitor or a 1080p, how many uh, video channels are you showing on each screen? you know, to be able to handle that. So it's um, it's really tricky to be able to precisely calculate that. Um, generally, what you can do is if you just ballpark, if you're doing a single monitor, you're pretty safe with just doing an i7. You're gonna do two dual monitor type of setup. Um, you might want to consider a graphics card in there, just a, a mid-range like a Quattro P1000 or something. That's going to generally kind of cover you. But again, it depends on the resolution. If, if displaying, you know, 50, 4K, 30 frames per second, streams on, a, on two monitors is a very different thing from 50, 1080p or 720p, 10 frames per second streams on two monitors. So it's a, it'd be a really profoundly different amount of hardware that it requires to do that. So it, it gets a little, um, it's a little crazy there. 
Uh, another question, is there a plan for Express Plus or Professional Plus to utilize hardware acceleration? Uh, it has, so, well, with the exception of NVIDIA for the recording server, but if you need it for, um, if you want to leverage it for mobile server, or if you want to leverage it, anybody, regardless of what they're connected to, can leverage it in the smart client software. Yeah, it's just on just on the recording server. I'm not sure if they're planning to bring that bring that down or not. Um, it would it would it's kind of one of those things where um, I think that's one of the things they use to kind of differentiate the tiers of the software. Um, but we can look into it. I'll, I'll you know be able to check and see. But it's, I think at this time there's not they don't have plans to lower that or to bring that down to lower tiers. Let's see. Um, the server calculator and use the newer CPUs. Yep, we're working on doing an, uh, a bit on the server calculator to include the newer uh, generation CPUs. Incidentally, one thing you can do, um, this is kind of off topic here and we're, we're going over time, but um, it looks like that was the latest question. So if people want to drop off, that's cool, but I do have a little tip for you um, for, with regard to the server calculator. So if you um, just look at the server calculator, it recommends an older uh, Xeon processor just because that list hasn't been updated. There's a really easy cheat you can do. So go to a, a website called Passmark. Uh, we use a uh, Passmark scoring and you can get a numeric score for the for the CPU in question. And then you can use that to compare against the latest scores because there's so many different CPUs out there. It's hard to know, you know, what is, is this CPU stronger than that CPU? There has to be some tool to give you a, a means of comparing apples to apples. And that's what we use to get a get an actual scoring of the CPU. And then you can leverage that and then compare that. So as long as the CPU you're looking at from Dell or, or HP or whatever uh, matches or exceeds that Passmark score for what we recommended, then you'll be in good shape. So that's that's kind of how we approach or we recommend that be approached. And I'm um, seeing here, what is this? Um, sorry, for recording server, would you recommend uh, i7 with uh, QuickSync or Xeon with NVIDIA? Most servers only come with Xeon. If you're going with expert or corporate, I'd say Xeon with NVIDIA. That's going to give you a little more. NVIDIA tends to have more horsepower than QuickSync does in terms of doing the decompression and helping you out. If, um, if you're talking a workstation, I do a NVIDIA with an i7. And because uh, your workstation is typically consumer class, I've, I've seen people throw $10,000 at a workstation for this really super high-end uh, Xeon card. And in the end of the day, it, you could have done just as well with a nice i7 and a couple of NVIDIA cards in there. It's um, it's kind of one of those things where um, smart client works better to think of it like a Corvette. You know, it needs a, it's a little sports car, doesn't carry a big load like a server does, but it needs to be able to move really fast to make trips back and forth. Whereas the servers benefit more from a Xeon, which is kind of like an 18 wheeler truck. You know, it needs to haul a bunch of data. It's not so much about speed. So that's kind of the um, bad analogy that I use there. And uh, what do we got here? Sorry, it's kind of hard to read this text on my screen, so bear with me here for recording, sir. Okay, now, uh, is it safe to say that using AMD is it recommended for milestone? No, it, if it runs Windows, it'll work. You just don't get hardware acceleration. So there's no uh, there's no harm in doing AMD. You can run Smart Client in it. Um, if you have an AMD processor combined with NVIDIA, as far as I know, you should be able to take advantage of the NVIDIA uh, part of the hardware acceleration. We just don't get a boost or a performance boost um, in terms of hardware G GPU acceleration from AMD chips. But yeah, as long as we're in Windows environment, we're fine. Just like if we're um, virtualized, you know, there may be some weird CPU under the hood or there's Linux running under the under the lower layer of a, of a virtual environment. But as long as we exist in Windows, then we don't have awareness of what's going on. You no know, kind of behind the scenes. So um, yeah, anybody is fine. It just, you just, or, or I'm sorry, AMD is fine. You just don't get that, that performance boost. Uh, looks like that's it for the questions. Um, uh, what do we got? Oh, one more, um, let's see. Are there any difference between IGB between an i3 and an i7 or are they very similar? Um, i5 and i7s tend to blur the lines a little bit more, but generally they do make a pretty significant difference in terms of, of power. I, I generally would recommend toward leaning toward the i7 if you're going to do like a multi-monitor thing or something. But um, i3, i5s, they'll get the job done for a single screen, um, especially if you're able to leverage the hardware acceleration. You don't you don't have to go crazy, crazy with it. Um, but it, again, it's just it's it's really hard to just throw a number out there because, like I said earlier, you know, if you're dealing with a bunch of high frame rate 4K streams, that's a whole different animal than if you're dealing with, you know, low frame rate 720p streams. It just, it, it depends on the content that you're showing, and especially if you have H.265. So if you are dealing with H.265 and you're in your workstation, there is, you really do need to have later generations of uh, Intel. So this would be like i7 or i5, but we're talking the ninth, eighth, seventh gen uh, CPUs. They're gonna deal better with the uh, H.265. Uh, the earlier generation CPUs do have quick sync, but they didn't really have them optimized for H.265. So you'd, really, you'd probably still need NVIDIA if you were gonna deal with H.265 in that example. So I think that is um, that is what we've got. 
Uh, let's check some more. We did. <laughs> um, there's there is a not a lot of knowledge out there, but um, it's it it's it, it's in the instruction manual. It's there's there's you know hardware guides and stuff. But um, don't be afraid to to reach out to your salesperson. Um, uh, again, I'm on this uh, pre sales engineering team. That's part of our job is to help answer questions for stuff like this and to help people set up um, these servers. If you want to do a pilot or if you um, if you're doing a test drive with a software, you have a customer that wants to test drive the software. That's part of what we do is to help with those pilots and to help set up those test drives. And we can answer a lot of these questions and also play matchmaker with our ecosystem partners and come to me and say, hey, Jason, I need um, an analytic that's going to do intrusion detection. or I need an analytic that, or I need a really good license plate recognition tool. And I can play matchmaker and say, hey, I really need to go talk to, um, you know, so-and-so. So um, that's that's. You know what we do. So please don't be afraid to, uh, if, if you don't know who your salesperson is, you know, call into the main number, you can get uh, what we call an ICM, the Insight Channel Manager, and they'll uh, they'll be able to help you out and get you pointed, um, either help you directly or get you pointed to a sales guy that's in your in your region. And uh, with, between those two, they can get you in touch with one of the pre-sales guys. We're all, um, we're all happy to help out. And uh, also we have our email, and I'm sorry if that was obscured, I don't know if it blocks the screen there. Um, so our email is presalesus at milestone.us. If you have questions, feel free to shoot those into us. Uh, we're happy to answer those. That's part of our job is to help you know make that pre-sales process go smoothly. Again, happy to help out and um, just let us know if we can do anything or if you have any suggestions for future 15-minute feature Fridays. So everybody have a good day. Thank you for attending and um, have a good weekend.